Bam! Today's tune is focused around one of the new drip-fed content cars in Update 1.20, and a true classic American muscle car, the 1969 Pontiac GTO, known as the Judge. This car is wild, it's somewhat hard to control, and it's unforgiving and it's mean, and I think I love it. So I built this tune to manhandle this thing around the Mons in the 700 performance points range. This will be a quick video giving you another 700 pp tune that you can use on multiple tracks. While this build is geared for the long extended straights of Le Mans, simply re-gear it for other courses and you have a muscle car at the ready. In terms of performance, this car is the polar opposite of the Cayman, the other car in this month's update. The car in-game is represented well with a fair amount of torque, body roll, and it's overall fairly thirsty on fuel. But the good news is with this tune you can use it on a daily if you want. It's not going to be the quickest, but the engine note under full acceleration or when you're gearing down is unlike anything else in the game. It's cheap too, so pick this one up if you like classic cars. Now just a quick note on this tune, we're stretching the envelope of what this car is capable of. So on the Mons, in bad weather you're not going to have any problems. If by chance you run the event and get no rain, it's going to be a fairly tight race. You can win both, so it's still a viable car to use. But clear weather just makes this course much trickier to run with a classic car. So in terms of history, the GTO is an awesome story. The first GTO was introduced in 1964. It was a big hit and is largely credited for the boom in street legal muscle cars. Unfortunately, it was outclassed by its rivals. So in 1969, GM went back to the drawing board and it took the 1968 second generation GTO and released a new version known as the Judge. It came with a sports package, exclusive logos and stripes, and was powered by a 6.6 .6 liter V8. It produced 360 horsepower and it was mated to a Hurst shifter. Now here's where I have a bit of a beef with the interior rendering of the current GT7. There's no Hurst shifter, and if you watch a replay with the interior camera, it's not even a manual transmission. It's not a big deal in terms of the car's performance, but it's an oversight and it seems like a fairly big thing to miss on such a critical aspect of this car's character. But overall, the Judge package was just $332 more than a regular GTO. Well worth the price, and these cars are still sought after as a great representation of true American muscle cars. Alright, so let's get into the tune. So stat changes from stock. We see an increase in performance to just under 700 performance points. Horsepower is now 671, and this new car has 672 pounds of torque. It's relatively lightweight for a muscle car. Weight comes in just around 2,700 pounds but acceleration, top speed, and cornering are all improved. This tune has a bunch of permanent upgrades, including a wide body kit from GT Auto, bore up, stroke up, engine balanced, polished ports, high lift cams, a racing crankshaft, and weight reduction stage three. Performance upgrades include a front spoiler and a rear wing from GT Auto, racing hard tires, fully customized suspension, fully customized LSD, full control computer, a power restrictor, a ballast, and a fully customized manual transmission, a supercharger focused on low-end torque, and racing components including air filter, muffler, exhaust manifold, racing brakes and pads, a brake balance controller, and a racing clutch on flywheel. For this build, this car runs on racing hard tires. You will need to pick up rain tires as well if you're planning to use this on the mods. So adjustments include, we did a lot of work to the suspension, lowering the car slightly, tightened the roll bars and springs, and adjusted the natural frequency. Handling on the original car isn't great, so we made some adjustments to the toe angle on the camber as well. The LSD is adjusted to ensure power is applied without losing traction at the rear end, and I increased both the front and rear downforce. This transmission does have some manual tuning to it, so pause the video if you want to get the exact gear ratios. It's tuned to max out on the Le Mans straight and can account for the bulkier laps in field mapping 6, but feel free to adjust it if you want to run this on a slightly different track. So overall the car came out fairly well, it still drives like a muscle car, you'll need to feather the throttle on corners or when the car is not planted. The back end will absolutely kick out on you if you don't respect the car on corners. But if you get in trouble just ease off the throttle and it'll correct. The tune is a marked improvement from stock and it allows this car to get some serious track credentials. For the race strategy, plan to run out fuel mapping 6 and short shift to ensure you have enough fuel for 3 laps. I'd recommend you keep both wet and intermediate tires on the car, just so you have options for the race and can adjust accordingly. As always, you're going to have to adjust for weather. You'll need two stops minimal for this race, and on the final lap or two, you can run full tilt of fuel mapping one to easily gain any lost time. As I mentioned, good weather is actually a tougher challenge for you on this tune. Ideally, you're running this thing in rain after lap three, and with proper tires, you'll gain like 40 to 50 seconds on the closest car. So the judge is in the legendary dealership for a limited time, 
If you want this card but are holding off, be sure to flag the car now so you're notified when it returns. For $200,000, it's a fun car. It definitely represents American muscle well, and it gives you some variety on your races. Just a quick note on the livery. This is a simple one designed to make the car look a bit more menacing, but still stay true to the era. It's a metallic black with custom badging. It's got a blacked out grille, chrome mirrors, larger chrome wheels, and custom plates. With the classics, I like to keep them somewhat simple, and the black I feel does a great job of making the car look just a little bit meaner. The stock carousel red is amazing, but I wanted something a bit different for this car. The tune is open, so if you want the badging but just want to change the color, feel free to adjust it. I hope you enjoy this tune, and this car not only earns you some credits, but it gives you some variety to enjoy. If you like these tunes, please like and comment below, as it greatly helps with the channel growth on YouTube, and it helps steer me in the direction to get you the right content. If you're looking to connect with others around gaming in general, feel free to join our 22 Gaming Discord. If you're looking for more info on GT7, tunes, or gaming in general, it's a great community. As always, thank you for your time, and I'll see you in the next one.